Stories with a Voice Like This presents Bright Thoughts and Joyful Tales, designed by J. H. Howard and published by McLaughlin Brothers. Part 2 of 2 Dobbin My dear little friends, if you look at Dobbin's straight ears, quiet face, and plump round body, you will see that he is well cared for. Freddy, his master, is very kind to him, never beats him, feeds him well, and takes him out every morning for a run. So greatly does Dobbin love his master that he will follow him all about the yard and down the road at times when Freddy allows him. And once, when the stable door was left open and he saw his master coming, he trotted out to meet him, looking so pleased, and laid his great shaggy head upon Freddy's shoulder. You see, even dumb creatures know when boys and girls are kind to them. Harry and His Dog What do you think of Harry in his scotch dress, and what do you think of Bob, his dog? Don't you think Harry looks very handsome in his fine clothes, and that Bob is very clever, sitting on his hind legs, begging for a bit of sugar? Bob is fond of sugar, and will play all manner of antics to get a piece. He can leap and swim and walk on his forepaws and draw a little cart which Harry has made for him and set upon the pony's back when it gallops across the fields without tumbling off. Bob is also a very faithful dog, for when Harry goes to bed he will lie down at the door of his room and there he will stay until Harry makes his appearance again in the morning. Violets Picking the violets kissing your feet, out in the country pleasant and sweet, roaming through meadows covered with dew, happier children than monarchs are you. Pleasure and happiness gladden each breast, no cares or trouble break your sweet rest, there among God's beauties happier far than thousands and thousands of bigger folks are. Ada's Pet Lamb Ada was a good, merry-hearted, happy little girl, loved by all who knew her and very dear to her mother's heart. She loved to run in the meadows and woods and pick the beautiful flowers, or wander in the lanes with her pretty pet lamb trotting at her heels. Ada and her pretty pet might often be seen rolling together upon the grass, and when the days were warm and fine and her mother could spare her, she would take her doll and cart and, followed by Curly, as she called her pet, would pass the time pleasantly in the woods beneath the green leaves or sitting by the brink of some tiny brook. Emma's Doll Emma and Mary were sisters. They had a brother named Jack, who seldom allowed a day to pass without playing off some of his tricks upon them. It happened one night that Emma, instead of putting away her doll as usual, left it upon the table in the parlor. Poor Emma! What was her grief next morning on discovering poor Dolly lying on the floor without its head? Jack, mischievous Jack, had cut it off, and it was nowhere to be found. But Emma said nothing, and Jack, who expected a good scolding, was so ashamed of his conduct that he begged Emma's forgiveness and atoned for his mischief by buying his sister a new doll. Kittens Two kittens being left alone in a room one evening began to amuse themselves with a ball belonging to Baby. For some time they got on very well and very good-naturedly together, but at length they grew sulky, and Tom, who was the wildest of the two, began to spit and growl and make such a noise that Puss, their mother, who was passing at the moment, slipped into the room to see what was the matter. She purred and mewed and talked to them in her own way, till they seemed quite ashamed of themselves, and when she called them the kittens obeyed and followed her down to the kitchen where they had their milk and went peaceably to sleep together in front of the fire. THE ARBOR We've built ourselves an arbor beneath the walnut tree. We've trained a hop across the top, and there we take our tea. 
When Ava has an apple and Lily has a pear, and Agnes has a bit of cake, they all agree to share. They make a splendid banquet and in the arbor lay, and if they cannot eat it all, they put the rest away. We've built ourselves an arbor beneath the walnut tree, but sometimes flap, the nuts will drop into your cup of tea. Jack and Jane Little Jack Toft sat up aloft in the bough of an apple tree. Little Jane May said to him, Pray, throw down an apple for me. Jack answered, No, all that here grow I shall want for myself. Any that fall, yours you may call. Oh, what a greedy young elf! Then came a crack, crash, and good lack! Down tumbled Jackie, but ah! Kind little Jane pitied his pain and carried him home to Mama.